Frankie here. Today I'm joined by Fleo, Sweet Technique from Montreal, and we're going to talk about experiences and knowledge on breaking. Fleo, thank you so much for joining me today. It's truly an honor. Thanks to you, bro. You're 28 years old, hometown of Montreal, and you actually have a documentary of the history on Montreal breaking that you did not too long ago. Do you want to talk a little bit about that to start? I started it like a, a few years back. It took me a couple years just because it was my first type of project like that. I went to interview the most like important people of the scene of Montreal from my perspective, especially focusing on people from the start and from the 90s, early 2000s, because I wanted to have a focus on like archive footage, videos that were not out that we couldn't find on internet. So that was kind of the idea behind the project. So it was historical, but artistic as well. I wanted to present basically what was the scene, what was the, the good, the bad point, the struggles, the important uh, cultural aspect of her scene and also I wanted it to touch the scenes all across the globe because I think the history of breaking spreading through the world is kind of similar in different different parts of the world especially the very early moments so I want it to be something where people can really relate and learn from it have fun enjoying it like just lay back watch footage nice music and also have a little uh, insight of our specific scene. So let's talk about a few things there. First of all, yeah, the documentary, if you watch through the whole thing and its flow, the piece itself is a is a piece of art, you know? Thank you. Absolutely. And the second thing, I like your choice of words when you talk about how, you know, we're all in different geographies, we may have our lifestyle and cultural differences, but there are certainly parallels from scene to scene that everyone can relate to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, we all have our differences, but what really kind of ties everything together is breaking itself, like the art form and like different sources of inspiration. Nowadays with YouTube, it's even more clear. We can all take what we like from it and bring our own brick to the wall. That's a French saying, but basically we can give something back, but after we kind of see everything that, that's been around before us, you know? Fantastic. Absolutely recommend that to anyone who has really any connection to breaking. So we're going to, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to move on here. So the first clip we're going to watch, 2012. I was growing into my style, I feel. Thoughts were bubbling in my mind like crazy. Motivation, passion, like in a moment where I could break every day for three hours, don't stretch, don't uh, warm up. Of course, that's bad, but I would run from school, go to train. I was with my friend Promo in this footage, okay. but since I'm a bit narcissistic, I just made a, f a recap of myself, but he was there being crazy fresh too. The quality of it, that's another topic that we can discuss after. My creative process, I think, was in a good spot at that moment. For example, I was in the bus going home or whatever. I was always thinking about breaking. When you go to the dance floor and you've been thinking about breaking like all day. It's like you visualized it before. It makes yes. the breaking process more easy. Really great moments, man. Like great moment with uh, Vicious, with uh, Promo, like doing a lot of events. Even I think I knew Gadget at that time from Boogie Brats, who was um, a big inspiration, like a really good friend nowadays still. And uh, who really kept me on the right way of being a an artist with an open mind. What I like about this clip, there was so much stuff to test. It was not like I was like, nowadays, I'm, since I've been breaking a bit less, sometimes I'm like, well, I'm just gonna drill things because like yeah. I, I maybe feel a little less like the world is to explore and breaking. I mean, I should, <laughs> but at that time specifically, there was no limitation. The curiosity. The curiosity was huge. 2012, how long have you been breaking? Let's say 10 years. I really started breaking seriously in 2007. Like I learned windmill in 2007, but I've been breaking since 2012. Okay. Uh, since, my bad, since 2002, sorry. Gotcha. And I was born in 95, so in 2012, what, 17? So I've been 17 in that, even though I look 14. You know, even as you're describing, you know, 10 years you've been at least exposed to breaking, five years you're serious, yeah. like even then it's that much time and effort to accumulate before you have what you're describing, being able to make those connections, come to practice, and boom, boom, idea after idea, right? Yeah, the creative process, thinking with a breaking mind all the time, you can't force it. You have to work your way towards it and it just comes at some point. So yeah, that's, can I get a soul clap? 2013, so one year later, yes. and it's already way different my breaking I feel from before. Battling with uh, promo, vicious, 
and the gadget. It's pretty epic for me and memorable because we've been battling the three of us for a long time together, being like pretty close, living in the same city. And Nathan, gadget, battled with us, and it meant so much for us because of the kind of big brother he became for us. So yeah, we felt such a strong connection battling together. We already won in our mind before we start, you know. A little bit like before, I have a lot of critics for <laughs> my uh, form and everything. The rest, man, is, is pretty uh, close to m how I see breaking, what I like about breaking. I still connect strongly to th that approach, straight to the point. I don't spend too much time like on top rock and musicality, really. I just try to have it in mind, maybe use it at certain moments. The French people, they call it prépa, top rock, which means preparation. That's a bit how I see it. What's going next that interests me? Put some original moves. I guess it's kind of move after move, but I try to also freestyle in between, trying to connect it naturally so it doesn't look redundant or all prepared. Flowy and also opened and closed, trying to vary between different body shapes, vary between levels too. That approach is a bit more serious. I'm not trying to make a lot of faces and like trying to be entertaining for the whole family. Just like a old 1995 hip hop group, we want to show people what we can do. Like Stripe said, you're not trying to sell your moves like an old cars dealer, you know? That's the best car right there, man. Look, nah, like we don't need to oversell the moves to oversell the approach. It's more on the low. It's the same concept when it comes to like, you make moves that look easy, but they're actually really hard. When you do it, the way we present it is like, yeah, fuck, it's just natural. We, but in reality, there's some work behind. So this is BC1 back in 2014. Now, we're kind of responding to what you were saying just now. I'll watch your footage and some of the transitions you're doing, you do them so seamlessly that it just kind of goes over people's heads sometimes. In reality, the level of technique and control that must go behind some of these moves, I can only imagine. To me, what's important is that I go towards the form, the shape, the breaking I enjoy based on my inspirations. And I've received positive feedbacks from a bunch of them, so I'm really grateful for that, and that's what also pushes me. What I can say is that it's pretty challenging sometimes to have this approach in battles like that, because you don't hear the yells, because it's not made to elicit that. You really have to kind of be in another zone, and it really has to do with your confidence. A little bit more content, a little bit more on point, the form a little bit better <laughs> compared to the stuff we watched before. Everything that I do here, I know I was practicing a lot. They don't have names, the moves, right? Okay, I have this, this, this I want to do, and then everything in between is just freestyle. It depends on the type of people. I just go for myself. I know, like, I was not expecting to make people cheer. That was not what was in my heart when I was there. It was more like, I'm going to defend my vision of breaking. Probably more something like that. If you have an approach that's not meant to be on a big stage, then you need to really be on point. I say that like I, I won, I didn't even win, like I lost, but like <laughs> those jams, man, they're like, they're a game and some people are more meant for that or they enjoy it more. And me, it was more of a challenge, but I still like it. I like to prove something, let's say. That's what keeps breaking. I feel like after all these years of dancing, there's so much mystery. There's always yeah. room to figure out how you can fit your pieces together to make it work. Yeah. You know, people feel like sometimes it's completely biased, it's all subject. Actually, sometimes everyone agrees one guy win, and sometimes we all agree one guy loses. So you got to make everyone agree that you were the best, and you can still do it with that style. Me, like at that time, I trusted my creativity and my abilities, even though it was not necessarily extreme, a lot of big power moves and all that. I just feel like I can make people relate, I can make people agree that I could be better than someone. It's not like a competition of creativity, but that is something that I would consider one of my strengths. This is 2018. This round was insane. We're gonna watch your first round. This is from FanFest. <laughs>
first thing I want to comment, nobody caught that. You changed directions with the track yeah. or the tap, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And no one caught that. It's, you did it so seamlessly, but... Maybe they didn't cut that or maybe it was not noteworthy. But really, like, it's not like I'm the type of person who's gonna care what type of sure, people react. Sure. I've seen people get mad of not getting reaction. I thought that was the most ridiculous thing ever. But yeah, like right there, I f that's way closer than my approach now. More comfortable with the form, with the with the top rock too. Also, yeah, you can see not everything happens exactly as planned. Little stuff that's kind of not done perfectly. That move, I did it one time and that was there. I did like a suicide swipe, like swipe that's and a half. That's the first time. Yeah, well, I've practiced it before, but that's the first time and it's the only time I did it in the battle. I always like to come up with new stuff instead of having like a notebook of all my moves and then I just add one more and now I have 26 rounds, you know? I always just like to renew my magazine of moves, you know, like uh, like Vogue magazine, they have new collection every year. That That's more how I would see it. That was always my mentality was not to stay with the old stuff that worked because it's an approach too that some people have, you know, like they have their moves for that much time. And there's some moves that I will do now because, yeah, like, oh, fuck, it's uh, when the final and I don't remember other stuff. So I'm going to go back with the 2013 <laughs> banger that I can remember. Always bring something new and then this helps you in competition because it's the element of surprise. People don't know the moves. You've practiced it in training, but you haven't done it every single competition the same way. Like, it's, it's cool too. Like, I'm not criticizing people who do it otherwise, but like, just to always just keep your mind active and come up with new stuff instead of really focusing on just keeping everything that you have. So as a final question here, really it's obvious from an outside perspective that you're taking inspirations, you're taking maybe experiences from other things and you're applying it to breaking, right? As we talk about, you have other artistic pursuits, whether it's music or whether it's digging through the history and such. I know you also do hair, right? So taking those kinds of inspirations and bringing it into your breaking, and it goes the other way too. You take the things you learn from breaking and apply it to those other things. There's the old adage, you do the big things the same way you do the little things, right? Mm -hmm. So within that context, I just wanna ask the overall question, now that we've gotten to get a little bit of your perspective overall, what does breaking mean to you, man? The thing I've done to the fullest for the longest, so it means a lot. It's a huge part of my life. Still is. I'm still getting from what I've done, getting recognition and opportunities thanks to you, for example, which is just like a gift because I'm not trying to have that, but it's always so, I'm so happy to be able to participate. It could look absurd to see it so seriously, but it helped me in, in different spheres. It helped me to know myself but also just to create something like the world. Why do you want to live life? Like, okay, to have a family, do something you like. So it's just like a normal need that you need to find something that makes you happy, that makes you want to go forward and push yourself, make you want to wake up every day. So breaking was that. I don't think everyone has the luck to have something like that. It's kind of hard to explain because it's a pretty deep question. It's not just a game, but also you need to see it as a game too. It's for fun, it's to be free. So it's just as serious as it's a game. We're like permanently kids playing on the floor. We're just like rolling around with the music. You know, I ask this question to basically every person that I ask. There's definitely the parallels, but I think one of the most beautiful things is your own choice of words. I always try to pick out and remember your precise choice of words. You're grateful to have breaking as a medium for something that is so core for life and you're so grateful for that because not everyone gets that. Not everyone gets something like breaking that we can resonate with, that challenges us and gives us the confidence and gives us what we need to be better people. Not everyone maybe gets that over the course of a lifetime. Yeah, no, exactly. It is a lot because not everyone has something else that will even come close to like how much it drove us. Sports doesn't necessarily have that creative aspect, but it also has that physical component. That's really rare, that's unique, and it has that historical and cultural aspect onto it that's really important, and then you learn about your taste. That's really important too. 
when you don't know what you like, you like everything, it's not necessarily bad, but then you kind of get lost. When I was breaking with one leg because I was injured, it restricted my possibility. So it made me go further into those who were available for me. That's why I think I kind of like went with a certain style that probably look a bit different than other people. You don't break for someone else, you break for you, but you should have the, an open mind to discover what I'm going to base my taste on, not your, just your friend, you know, not just like the most famous Red Bull dancers. You're gonna, you want to do kind of your homework and then you can bring back your ego a little bit to say, okay, what do I choose to do, you know? But it should be a, a process where your mind stays open and especially where you go figure out what was done before, you know? That's really important. We're gonna wrap this up here. Are there any last thoughts you have to share with our audience here? Guidance or advice for younger folks that are trying to elevate their skills or just navigate breaking in general? Have an open mind, be able to change your perspective. Also, just you gotta break a lot, work a lot. You know, people who differentiate themselves nowadays that I know they break most of the time. Going through that, that you're gonna like start developing your own creative ideas. Don't necessarily try to be super different, to be so original, just like that when you don't really know like the foundations. I think you will end up looking something that's completely different than breaking or look like everyone else who tries to skip the foundation part and just be original from the start. I'm not saying most people do that. I think people, sometimes people do one or the other. They stay more in foundation or they just go more into not having such a nice form and they're just trying to like look different. But I think it's, you got to do both. And then it's okay if you have your own flavor, your own taste. Are you inspired by the style element guys or from the flip side or European or from New York, whatever, like besides that, you got to work a lot. And instead of asking someone how to do flair, you got to do flair, <laughs> try to do it, the flair instead of saying, but I want to, you know, like right, right. most things you just got to do it over and over. And one, one last tip for getting better, always go do your round knowing what you want to do better. What is it that you did before that was not right? Okay, it's cool. Sometimes you just go, you go nuts and you freestyle and you have fun. But when you're in the process of getting better, be critical towards what you do. Like, know what are your flaws. Trying to find out what are your flaws. What does your main inspiration have or your people that you look up to do that you, when you look at yourself, like, it's not that I want to be them, but I kind of suck and they kind of look good. Maybe it's, you have a flaw in your physical positioning. You're already improving in your head before you go to practice. Instead of asking people what you should do better or how you can do this move, since you have an opinion about what you like about breaking. The way you're describing practicing flair, for example, you probably already know yeah. what you need to do. You're, you're gonna yeah. figure it out. You're gonna learn all the lessons you it's need. Not, it's not winning a jam that will make you good. Is doing the boring stuff well that will make you win the jam. Absolutely. The progress, so, the actual process of progress, it's yeah. not sexy at all. It's not, it's not <laughs> sexy. That's why you, you're already starting with the, the mentality that, oh, yeah, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a challenge. There's some, some work to do. And when you start as a kid, it's more easy. The younger you start, the more time you have to go further. But there's no like age limit neither neither so absolutely and the other thing you mentioned about being more perceptive when you're trying to evaluate your sets yeah. it's a little too general maybe a little too vague to just say i'm gonna practice for work yeah yeah like you can look and see oh okay i have this default thing or, or i never use the flexibility of this part of my body you just gotta <laughs> Be critical towards yourself. Absolutely. Fleo, thank you so much for your time once again. We're going to wrap it up here. Thank it's, you, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure we're going to see more of you in the future. So we're going to end it there. Thanks again. My pleasure, bro. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace.